Well, welcome back to the YouTube channel and the first beginnings of our summer garden. It is possible snow later today and I just have got growing seeds on my mind. And our garden was quite successful and we want to grow it and expand it this year. So Murdoch and I decided we would start pulling out any dead left vines from his potatoes and his pumpkins. Dad's delivered us two scoops full of manure with the backhoe bucket. This whole area was all vegetable garden, tomatoes, onions, cucumbers. Uh, we tried some sunflowers, but this is pig fencing. This is our former pig pen. And a lot of little bunnies like to come in here. So we're devising a plan to chicken wire the bottom to keep the bunny rabbits out or hardware cloth. And this area was all pumpkins. And of course we've had this pig pen, um, their little hutch here, which doubles nicely for a tool shed so that we don't have to walk all over the yard to go and find things. We're gonna put the pumpkins on the outside of the fence this year. We've done it in the past. They did well just in the yard with a little more sunlight. Uh, these trees, maybe block some of their sunlight. And this walnut tree, you know, they have that jugulone, may or may not affect them growing outside, but I've had them out there in that spot before and they did fairly well. We are going to grow everything we need for homemade stew. We're just loving the homemade stew with uh, potatoes and carrots and onions. We did peas over here and the rabbits ate them all. <laughs> so, just kind of devising some more plans. We started looking on uh, Facebook and Craigslist, uh, offer up. We're looking for more tomato cages. We did chicken wire tomato cages. Uh, they're not as strong, but we had a little trouble once the plants got big, you know, with falling over. So being ready ahead of time. I actually had been looking them up a week ago and saw a man at Menards buying his supply for this summer. So, as gardening goes, we just kind of quit and left everything out here. Maybe we'll work on our skills of that. But turning the little pig shed into a spot to lay the tools, I think that'll go a long ways with us. So, we're just getting rid of our mounds from our vegetables. We kind of healed things up for pumpkins and tomatoes and the potatoes. So we're leveling it all out and we're going to just gonna pitch fork or top dress all the manure out. My husband laughs at me because he says I'm never going to get rich selling these plants for $5 to people. But for me it's a maintenance issue of scaling it back a little bit. I had said before uh, some of these plants were here already and there's like a cluster of about five plants right here. They need to be thinned out. We only have this thin spindly rhubarb which means that it's crowded. It's also, it's like that whether it's hot and dry or early in the spring. My other rhubarb is pretty, pretty thick stemmed. And some of it's just downright massive. So I've been watering in here a little bit, taking all my old pots from buying strawberry plants and whatnot from over the years and starting to divide off some of the asparagus. So I'm gonna grab the hose and give some of this a little bit of water while I am taking care of the cattle today. But you can see here, I was digging out, there was a row of asparagus here and a row of asparagus here when we moved here. And this has all just been kind of dying back. So it's better to just dig it out and get rid of it. This is a little itty bitty root of an asparagus. It's so dry, I can't even get like a crown out of here. It's just, a cluster like this, almost like digging up um, irises. So I've got a few more to go before I'm done with this project. And if your animals are anything like mine, it never fails that they poop in their water tank. Dump that water out where you need it. It is called compost tea, manure water. Just pour it right on here and that'll really help revive these a little bit. So I'm going through, pulling out the dead stuff and giving it only to the new growth. Now my husband kind of chuckles because I've been selling off rhubarb divides. I have a couple of plants um, deep 
and I wanted a single row after I had sold some off. I just been narrowing it down, but some of them just need thinned. Some of them are real spindly and skinny like this, some even skinnier. And if there's not enough air moving around them, uh, you see I'm getting insects in here. There's a rhubarb weevil that I've seen before in here and showed her or him. Um, they dig a little hole and deposit a little bit of larva and the larva can be feeding off of the rhubarb. It's disgusting. So I'm picking out all the bad rhubarb, picking off the leaves that are bad. Um, when they start getting limp like this, it's been crimped at some point. I just pull it out, throw it in a discard pile, anything too skinny like that. He backed the backhoe into here. That's not going to grow, but it's still good enough to use. So that goes in the bake pile. So the kids are going to get a little treat of some rhubarb crisp today. And in the meantime, I'm getting this all cleaned up and watered and it'll be easier to dig out. I got like two plants growing out of this one because it's been multiplying so much. Sometimes they come up easy. Today, not so much because it's been so dry. And then it gives me the opportunity to go in here and pull out some of this wild grass that's creeping up where I don't want it. Good thing to do while I'm filling buckets to take to the cow water in the barn and filling up their water. So like I've said before, I'm not going to get rich doing this, but I've made $80 today just off of a few uh, rhubarb starts, divides, and asparagus crowns. That's pretty respectable. I didn't used to make $80 a day at my paying job before I quit working before having the kids. Now keep in mind, that kind of sale doesn't happen every day. Some days there's no sales and all winter long there's no sales. In the winter time, we're solely relying on Etsy, we're relying on sales that we made in the summer, and a little bit of YouTube money. It doesn't go very far, and with five kids in the house, you can believe it gets spent on groceries pretty fast. Now you knew when I got those chickens, I wasn't gonna keep all those chickens. I sold a handful of those chickens the other day. And that was a $200 sale on a Saturday morning that I didn't have to leave the farm for, but I did have the investment of the chickens and the feed, hardware cloth and things like that. That's why it's important to keep them safe and keep things like woodchucks out of the garden because the garden didn't cost me any money ever to establish this. This was all divides and plants that were already here. So you look after what you have because it's your income So there's one of the rhubarb bugs. They eat the leaves. They put these little holes right here. So we're just sorting them out. You can pinch them and kill them. The main thing is, if you have curly dot growing, rip it out. That's this. And it produces a lot of seeds, so it's hard to maintain and it is a bugger to pull out. And make sure all your dead leaves are getting out. Like I had said before, I used to compost with the leaves and let them sit here and it was actually attracting that problem, uh, amplifying it. So we stopped doing that this year and just hope to keep improving on this gardening skill because everything changes. Nothing's the same. If I pick a stalk of rhubarb like that and I get some of the root, I just go ahead and plant it wait it out and see if it'll grow and sell it as a rhubarb start instead of a divide. So if you're a stay at home mom, a teenager, a boy like mine at home, anything like that that you need a little bit of extra side income and you just want to show off some of your talents, divide some of your plants, look around and see what you might be able to start dividing like your hostas, tomato plants, things like that that maybe other people have neglected to get that head start on for their summer garden. I hope this helps you in your family budgeting and everything that you've got going on. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe so you can see what we've got going on in the garden in our next show.